what are some discipline and regulations that Islam reveals uh, in regards to intimacy between husband and wife. These are the comprehensive ayat that deal with that subject. We have more access to filthy things than any society ever before us. We just have access to this stuff, you know. And as a result of that, the perversion inside one's family life is very easy. That we actually see images on TV and they start controlling or start influencing what we think intimacy between a man and a woman should be like. And we start avoiding uh, uh, the, the restrictions that Allah Azza wa has put on us. Actually these perversions and these deviations, and the worst of them of course is the industry, right? These perversions, what they do is they take human beings away from the fitrah. When, they, when your shame, when your, when your, your dignity in, that Allah has granted you is destroyed. Because this, these, these filthy images, these shameless images, they destroy your sense of shame. They kill the spirituality inside a person. Their fitrah dies. And when that dies, then, you know, they, they're, they, they no longer have, you don't even have respect for yourself when you're watching images like that. Much, to, much less to have respect for your spouse or anybody else. You know, you start looking, I was talking a couple of days ago to a group of youth in New York and I was telling them, you know, once people get addicted to this kind of thing, then the young man, he doesn't even see a woman, he just sees a piece of flesh walking by. That's all he sees. Just like an animal looks at another female animal. It's just like prey. They're checking everyone out, just physically. That's all they are, is physical bodies walking around, worthy of checking out. And you just become this complete pervert that has no sense of dignity for another human being. And you know, when you're in that state, then marriage is not your solution, by the way. Marriage is not, you're, if you're a pervert with, before marriage, you're a pervert after marriage. You have to protect your dignity before you go into, into your marriage, because otherwise you're gonna ruin what is supposed to be a beautiful relationship between the husband and the wife. Anyhow, so فَأَتَزِلُوا النِّسَاءَ فِي الْمَحِيلِ وَلَا تَقْرَبُوهُنَّ حَتَّى يَطْهُرْنَ And don't go near them until they become pure. Tahura in Arabic, this is a, the fa'ula form of the verb, which is interesting because it actually means of something to become something, to be something in and of itself. It's used for inherent qualities. Like they say, karuma, to be honored. Karuma is used to be honored. Ba'uda, to be far away. It's an inherent quality. It's not something that's attained. It's not something that you acquire. So it's, the, the beauty of the word is, you know, فَإِذَا حَتَّى يَطْحُرْنَا Until they become pure again in and of themselves. In other words, Allah Azza wa by using this word, describes women as inherently pure. And they go temporarily, you know, through a period of impurity. And he didn't even call it impurity. He didn't call it najas at the time. What did he call it? Adhan, pain. And this is again an honoring of women, even in this period, that Allah called it pain. And of course, that pain could be, Physical, psychological, emotional, all kinds of pain. So yes, aluna ka anil mahid, but it's not spelled out. You know, they ask you about the period of impurity. They don't ask you what they should do with their women in the, it's not spelled out. It's just they ask you about the period of impurity. And then Allah does not go out explicitly to explain, let me tell you how that works, but actually it's painful. It's pain itself. That's it. فَاعْتَزِلُ النِّسَاءَ فِي الْمَحِيلِ And then stay away. اعتزال actually means to avoid someone and stay away from them. This is the word used in Surah Al-Kahf when the young people were to stay away. Get away from everybody, get away from society and go far away. فَاعْتَزِلُونَ you know, فَإِذِ اَعْتَزَلْتُمُوهُمْ وَمَا يَعْبُدُونَ إِلَّا اللَّهِ فَأُولَ الْكَهَفِ Right? So Allah says, فَاعْتَزِلُوا nisa, Stay far away from the women. But actually you have to understand this in the context of the ayah. It's talking about the intimacy between husband and wife. When it comes to that, stay away. Don't even try to cross that line you know, you, you will get carried away and you'll make a big mistake. So in that sense, stay away. You don't recite this ayah to your wife and say, this week I'm staying in a hotel or like, you know, you get a restraining order, religious restraining order from your wife. It's not, that's not what this means. It's, I mean, some ulama in our past, interestingly enough, did take it very, very literally and they wouldn't even go near their wife, you know, for any purpose. For in that time. But actually that's an extreme position. Normally speaking, the idea is that you avoid that level of intimacy with the spouse at that time, fil mahil. Then when they make the effort to purify themselves, the different pattern is used. It's not fa'idha tahurna. It's fa'idha tatahharna. It's tafa'ala. And tafa'ala has an effort in it. In other words, they, you know, they, they take ghusl, they wash up, etc. Tatahharna. Then fa'tuhunna min haythu amarakumullah. Then approach them. مِنْ حَيْثُ أَمَرَكُمُ اللَّهِ And even the, then further, describing this act, Allah Azza wa says, approach them from where Allah commanded you. And I'm not going to spell that out for you. Because the beauty of it is Allah didn't spell that out for you. 
the beauty of it is the believer understands he can take a hint you know don't be perverted in the intimacy between yourself and your spouse approach them from where Allah commanded you in Allah yuhibbu tawabin no doubt Allah loves those who make tawbah repeatedly oh my goodness the ayah hasn't even finished yet and Allah is taking you back to tawbah you just had, and the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam teaches us that that, that that act of love, the physical love between the husband and the wife is an act of ibadah. It's an act of worship. And yet, because it's one of the great joys of life, it's one of the, you know, and for any human being, you know, it's one of the great temptations of life. And Allah has given us a halal avenue to pursue that. Now that Allah has given you that ni'mah, right after that ni'mah, instead of mentioning shukr, Allah mentions tawbah. Inna Allah yuhibbu. At-tawabin. And the other thing about this beautiful ayah is that Allah could have used the word yuhibbu once. He could have said, Inna Allah yuhibbu tawabina wal mutatahirin. Allah loves those who make tawbah and those who make an attempt to cleanse themselves continuously. But He mentioned love separately for the people who do tahara, who, who cleanse themselves. Why? To highlight just like tawbah is a very important aspect. Repentance is a very important aspect of spiritual cleansing. Physically remaining pure. Physically being pure, being in the state of wudu, not having najas on our clothes, going to the bathroom carefully. There are two things that if they are inside a marriage, if you maintain two things inside a marriage, then you'll have a beautiful marriage. If the husband and spouse encourage each other towards tawbah, and the husband and wife encourage each other to remain pure. And Allah does not undermine the importance of the physical relationship between, the physical love between husband and wife. That is an important aspect of, of marriage. Unfortunately, in in our society, either you have there's a complete lack of it, because you know we, we we have such a taboo in some some traditional cultures where the intimacy between husband and wife after you reach a certain age it's niburi baate, that sort of thing. It's like a disrespectful. You can't have intimacy between husband and wife. It's too, we're too old for that now. That sort of thing. It's unnecessary formality. And on the other hand, there is it, you know there's no limits, there's no restrictions. And this, these are both extremes. And the husband expecting too much from the wife, and just treating her like you know, you know, like a commodity. That's these are unhealthy extremes. So a healthy balance has to be maintained between the the, the, the needs, the the physical needs of a husband, the physical needs of a wife, but also the spiritual and the emotional needs. And th- those things come together when we really become conscious of the fact that this, even this most intimate act, when Allah Azza wa Jalla described the closest part of it, Allah said, "Min haythu amarakumullah," from where Allah commanded you. Like Allah is in between this relationship, you better not forget that Allah allowed this relationship to happen. That you better remember you're not an authority as a husband. That Allah Azza wa Jalla is the authority. And may Allah Azza wa Jalla make us help us become better husbands. The crazy thing that happens is husbands are reading about what husbands deserve. And wives are reading about what wives deserve. As opposed to the opposite. Husbands are supposed to be reading about what? What the wives deserve. But everybody's obsessed with themselves. The principle, the underlying principle in marriage, as it is in everything else in this deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you worry about your obligations and you forget about your rights. I know that sounds very harsh. But if you can do that, I mean experiment it for six months. Forget about your rights, worry about your obligations. What can I do for my wife? What more can I do for her? Can I buy her a gift? I haven't given her anything for a long time. You know, if she makes a mistake, pretend like you didn't even, she didn't even make it, right? وَإِن تَصْفَحُوا وَتَغْفِرُوا تَعْفُوا وَتَصْفَحُوا تَصْفَحُوا means cover the page. When you cover a page, you can't see the previous page, right? So if your wife makes a mistake, you pretend like you don't even see it, right? Instead of bringing it up and again with this, you know, so you cover her mistakes, and you go out of your way to fulfill your side of the obligations. You go out of your way to show sabr and compassion and overlooking, and even the hurtful comments, you don't respond to them except with a smile, etc, etc. You go out of your way to do your part. Because you know, when you start expecting, you expect certain things from your wife, she should take care of me, I have physical needs, I have needs, I have psychological needs, she should give me company, she should be nicer to me, she should smile when I come home from work instead of frowning at me all the time and reminding me what groceries I didn't do or what laundry I forgot to finish, right? She should be nicer to me. There's always these expectations in your head. And you know the believer, who does he expect from? The believer expects from his Lord, right? Because everyone besides Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will disappoint your expectations. 
ضعف الطالب والمطلوب is a universal principle Allah Azza wa Jalla revealed. The one who seeks, the one who demands is weak, has been weakened, and whatever he seeks has also been weakened, inherently weak. So what, so long as you place any hopes in creation, you are necessarily going to be disappointed. All the great tragedies that happen in the Muslim community that people don't even want to talk about because they sound so disgusting, where did they start? They start from a husband not take care, taking care of the wife and a wife not taking care of the husband. So this is, this is at the heart of being a believer and sustaining our iman. Taking care of the wife and taking, taking care of the husband. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us the best husbands and grant us the best wives.